Hey everybody, this is Miss Dietrich helping you on lesson 1.5. This is number 4 and uh, this is on greatest common factor and distributed property. A store clerk is bagging spices. He has 18 teaspoons of cinnamon and 30 teaspoons of nutmeg. Each bag needs to contain the same number of teaspoons and each bag can contain only one spice. How many teaspoons of spice should the clerk put in each bag? How many bags of each spice will there be? All right, so the first thing we should probably think about is uh, let's add these two numbers here together because that's going to get us the total number of teaspoons that we're dealing with here. If we add the 18 and the 30, just to have that number kind of tucked away in the back of our heads, 8 plus 0 is 8, and 1 plus 3 is 4. So we're dealing with 48 teaspoons of various spices. All right, now we need to find the GCF of both of these numbers, 18 and 30. So let's kind of scroll down and do 18 over here and we'll put 30 over here like this and we'll use prime factorization for our technique for how to find the greatest common factor. So let's think of prime numbers that would give us 18. The lowest prime number that would go into that would be 2. So it would be 2 times 9. Since 9 is composite we're going to keep branching. 3 times 3 would be 9 and then we'll bring down the 2. Alright so these are all prime numbers so that prime factorization is complete. Now let's work on the 30. 3 goes into it, and 10 goes into it. Since 10 is a composite number, let's keep branching. We're going to get a 2 and a 5, and let's bring the 3 down. The prime factorization for 30 is 3 times 2 times 5, or if we put them in order from least to greatest, 2 times 3 times 5. Now, let's look for our matches. We have matching 2's. I'm going to write that number down right here. We have matching threes. I'm going to write that number down right here. That's it. That's all that matches. So now let's take these two numbers together and multiply them, and that's going to be our GCF, which of course is 6. All right, so now let's talk about where we're going to put the 6. We're going to put the GCF on the outside of our little setup here, because that's going to represent the number of teaspoons. All right, so now we have to ask ourselves, because remember we had 18 teaspoons of cinnamon. 6 times what? would be 18. 6 times what is 18? And the answer to that is 3. Now let's look at our other number, 30. 30 teaspoons of nutmeg. 6 times what is 30? And the answer would be 5. Alright, so basically what we're looking at here is we're looking at you need 6 teaspoons, 3 bags of cinnamon, and 5 bags of nutmeg. Now let's just took, take a look at another way that we can confirm that we did things correctly. Earlier we added these two numbers and we got 48. Let's make sure that if we apply order of operations that we would still get 48. If we did this plus this we would get 8 and this means 6 times 8. Is 6 times 8 the same as 48? It sure is, confirming that we've done it correctly. Now there's another way that you may see distributed property organized. And I want to show you this just in case it comes up on a quiz or a test. You know how 6 was the GCF? You might see that put in both sets of parentheses. And then we can take these two numbers. We'll put the 3 here and we'll put the 5 down here. And I want to show you why this and this are really the same thing. Now this means 6 times 3, which we have represented here. And this, 6 times 5 was represented here and of course we're adding the two things together. Now if we went ahead and did order of operations here, isn't that 18? Look familiar? Isn't this 30? Look familiar? And doesn't that equal 48? Alright, so we've applied distributed property and we've applied using GCF to find the answer to this question, which the answer is right here.